Welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be doing AFC East team grades for the draft. Okay, and we're going to start off with the Bills. Their team needs going into the draft a right tackle, right guard, left tackle, wide receiver, DN, linebacker, right? So, you know, a lot – pretty much they need to rebuild the offensive line. They, we knew they needed to get uh, another wide receiver. And they needed to beef up on the defense a little bit. Obviously, Bob Miller coming off his injury, we expect him to do good. But they need to get depth just in case that injury happens again. And obviously, having to replace linebackers happens pretty much every year for every team. Now, if you look at the, what the Bills were able to do, they got possibly the most athletic tight end in the draft in Dalton Kincaid, at number 25 overall in the first round. This is a guy that, you know, projected to, to basically be a star. In the NFL, there were a lot of really good players, especially tight ends. This is way, was a deep tight end draft, and Dalton Kincaid is is probably going to be really good. I think having him as a weapon in that offense, um, you know, if you need to slot Dawson Knox in the slot, you can have Dalton Kincaid at tight end or vice versa. I think having that versatility between your tight ends helps the team overall. It'll help Stephon Diggs. It'll help Josh Allen. Um, and it'll definitely help in the run game. Having more tight ends, uh, more effective, high-level tight ends uh, is going to be good for the run game. If you look at who they got in the second round, they got their guard, presumably of the future. This guy is a beast, allowed zero, played for four years, allowed zero sacks in college for Florida. Osiris Torrance. This guy is is a house of a human. And it, pretty much anybody that that talks said this guy, if somebody would have picked him in the mid to late first round, nobody would have been surprised to get him at, at 59 overall in the second round. Really good value. Somebody that they could definitely have for a really long time if they can find a way to pay him in the future when, when that comes up. But a, a really solid piece to have in the run game, have as a pass protector for Josh Allen. And so that, that's another good pick. You look at being able to get a linebacker in the third round, they get their wide receiver in, in the fifth round at 150 overall. Come another player out, coming out of Florida, Justin Shorter. So they didn't really have a whole lot of draft capital to do a whole lot, right? Came into the draft with six picks, come out with six, six players picked. Um, so they didn't have a whole lot to work with, but I think, with what they had to work with, they did a good job. I think they did a good job filling a couple holes that they needed. There are still holes on this roster, but still a, a roster with a lot of talent. Um, so they'll be competitive. They still have Josh Allen. They still have Stefan Diggs. So you you would expect this team still going to be putting up points. They'll find a way. So uh, overall, I have the Bills with a draft grade of a B plus for the 2023 draft. Now the Dolphins, their draft needs going into the draft were tight end, cornerback, and linebacker. Now the problem for them is that they came into the draft with only four picks. They came out of the draft only having four players drafted. Okay, so not a whole lot to do, and that's because of trades that they made. Obviously, Bradley Chubb is a part of that. Tyree Kill is a part of that. So they gave up a lot of draft capital, and the result is only having four picks this year. But because of trades that they made, they don't have a whole lot of holes to fill, right? So um, I think getting Cam Smith in round two, pick 51 overall, he's going to be really good in the NFL. This is a, a draft that was pretty deep at cornerback. I think Cam Smith has a lot of potential uh, to be a shutdown corner in the NFL. But either way, I think he'll be solid in the NFL. Like he, He's one of those guys that has a high floor. You know, also has a pretty high ceiling, but definitely has a high floor. I think that was a really good pick for them to bolster a secondary that lost a couple guys in the offseason. They get another running back, um, I believe, was the, the fastest running back in this draft. But a guy that, in my opinion, doesn't make a whole lot of sense for them with the way that team's already built. They already have some running backs like. Sure, building for the future because the guys that you have aren't going to be there forever. But it just it felt like a random pick to me. I think they could have gone elsewhere when they had other needs. They could have focused on specifically at the linebacker position and being able to get guys that could stop the run. But they were able to get a tight end in the sixth round, and Elijah Higgins, guy that I feel like kind of slept on because you know Ivy League guys, even though he's from Stanford, Ivy League guys kind of slept on. 
Um, but a guy that, that if you look at the draft reports, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know who this guy is. I don't, but I read different draft reports and what different experts had to say about this and different former scouts had to say about this guy. And this is a guy that, that could be one of those late round sleeper picks uh, that, that emerges for a team, especially with the role that he's going to have in Miami in the, the spot that he needs to fill there uh, could be effective right away. and could be a guy for them right away. So we'll have to see. And then obviously getting some offensive line depth in the seventh round, uh, getting a tackle. So it was a solid draft for what they had, but again, they didn't have much to work with. You know, for me, it's going to be a C minus um, again, the tackle, Late, I think you could have gotten uh, defensive line depth there. The running back, I think you got could have gotten a linebacker at that spot in round three. You know, but you know, I do like the Cam Smith pick. I do like the Elijah Higgins pick from everything I've read. Um, so you know, it was a so-so draft, but they didn't have much to work with. So that downgrades it for me to a C minus. Moving on to the Jets, their team needs coming in. Uh, were offensive line, a couple different pieces on the offensive line, linebacker, and they needed cornerback depth. So starting with that offensive line, they did draft some guys that are going to be able to help protect Aaron Rodgers, which is exactly what you need. He can still move, but Aaron Rodgers isn't 28 anymore. You know what I mean? He's 38, going to be 39. You know, he's getting older. So having guys to protect him is going to be important. They get a guy uh, at center, Joe Tittman, which, you know, drafted at center, but but – can play versatile throughout the interior of that offensive line the way they need to. Obviously, uh, the the Jets signed a center in free agency. So will Joe Tittman be starting at center? Probably not. He could get shifted around, uh, but he has that versatility. Coming out of Wisconsin, you know, those Big Ten schools like that, they, they kind of pump out uh, really good offensive linemen. So expect him to be pretty good. They also, in the fourth round, at pick 120, got – an offensive tackle, bringing another guy in uh, to either start or be depth. And obviously, they again, they got some guys in free agency for the offensive line, so I think they've done a good job getting guys to be able to protect Aaron Rodgers. Uh, the question kind of is, have they done enough to really compete for the AFC East crown? They In this draft, you know, they already had, you know, what, top 10 defense last year, round one, pick 15. They get defensive end Will McDonald the fourth coming out of Iowa State, a guy that, that could have gone top 10, you know, if, if things have fallen di- a little bit differently, guy that could have gone top 10 in this draft has that kind of potential. Is he going to be a superstar in the NFL? We'll have to see if he develops into that. You know, with solid defensive coaching around him, that's very possible. Um, but we'll have to see if that happens. But he's definitely going to be really good and could see him have an immediate impact for this Jets team. He, I mean, he is a very good football player. They went and got another running back uh, out of Pittsburgh, Israel Abanaconda. This guy could be a dog, and obviously he's going to be behind Brees Hall. Brees Hall coming back from the injury, so at least to start the season, this guy pretty good uh, insurance to have. Um, but you got two guys that you can rely on in the future that you can kind of flex in and out, especially with the Brees Hall injury and, and kind of preventing him from having wear and tear in the future. You pair these guys together and you're able to get them in the fifth round, which is, is amazing value for the talent that he's going to be able to provide for this team and the versatility that he's going to be able to give the offense. So I think the Jets are going to be competitive uh, in the AFC East for sure. I think they're going to be competitive in the AFC as a whole. Um, we'll talk more about them in depth in the future uh, in, its, in this offseason. Uh, but for me, they get a B, a solid B for for this draft. You know, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, wasn't, you know, anything crazy outstanding. They end up with seven players drafted. Um, but, you know, pretty good draft and a lot to be excited about if you're a Jets fan. And to finish off the AFC East teams, we're going to be talking about the Patriots, whose needs going into the draft were right wide receiver, inside linebacker, outside linebacker. Now, obviously, I'm a Colts fan, so I could sit here and I could just talk shit about the Patriots and oh, they're not going to do anything. Um, but let's talk real about the Patriots real quick. Okay, I like their first round pick, Chris Gonzalez, very good corner, slips down to 17 somehow. I don't know how that happens, uh, but the the Patriots secondary. With the youth that they have, especially, I mean, they they look pretty good in the secondary with what they were able to do. There, that was a need for them. They went and filled that. 
They were able to get defensive end Keon White with the 46th pick in the second round. Another really solid pick. Um, a guy that, in my opinion, probably could have been taken in the first round. He has a lot of talent. Needs to be refined a little bit, but you expect with the defensive coaching he'll get in New England that, that they'll shape him up and he'll be a solid pass rusher for them uh, for the future for a long time to come. Now, some things that didn't really make sense to me, they drafted a kicker before drafting a wide receiver. You look at the Patriots. Now, I know they kind of went heavy in the offense in free agency, but I thought drafting a wide receiver and adding that depth, not only having that depth, but but getting a piece for the future as you're trying to help your quarterback. You know, all the things being said about Mac Jones, you know, is he the guy for the future for the Patriots? You can solve a lot of those problems. You just bring a bunch of different guys in, right? So I thought for sure they should have addressed a wide receiver in the first three rounds. They did not do that. They actually didn't get a wide receiver until the sixth round of this draft. They drafted a kicker in the fourth round. They didn't get their second receiver until their third of four picks in the sixth round. With their second pick in the sixth round, they got a punter. right? So they got two specialists in the draft. They came into the draft with 11 picks, they end up with 12 players picked. So, they, I mean, they were making moves. Patriots were definitely making moves, and they got guys that they hope can play right now. Obviously, you're getting specialists. You hope they can play right now. First couple picks, definitely guys that you would expect are going to be playing right now. Um, and then you look at what the Patriots generally do and, and how they draft, and you look at special teams for them. A lot of these guys probably going to be really good special teamers for them in the future. So what what they have, what they were able to do, honestly, I think it was a solid draft. Some of the things doesn't make sense, and that's kind of what weighs it down. Um, but I do like a lot of the guys that they were able to draft. Um, I like that the fact that they, they had 11 picks, went up to 12 picks, like having a lot of draft capital definitely matters, being able to build your roster and trying to rebuild what they have going on there in New England. For me, they get a B. Again, I think if they got more – Wide receivers, if they got a wide receiver earlier, I think I'd definitely give them a better grade. I think that's still a big need for them. Um, but what they were able to do, I think they had they had a pretty solid draft. But but nothing, you know, outstanding. I don't think this is going to be one of the best Bill Belichick drafts of all time. Um, but pretty solid. I'd love to know what you think of each of the AFC East teams. What would you grade them? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to keep coming back every day for more offseason content, and we'll see you for the next video. Thank you